Hey everyone, we're so happy to see you here today. Before I start with some announcements, I want to remind you that during this video, you can fill out your prayer requests and you can also prepare your giving. Our hosts will be collecting them right after. Well, I'm here to let you know about a couple things coming soon and four ways for you to be part of our church community. The first way is through Next Steps. If you're new or newer here, Next Steps is our process to help you become part of the community here at the house. Step two, The House Is My Home is happening next Sunday in the library. Lunch is on us. If you finish step one, we want to invite you to join us. Let us know you're coming by registering online. Second way to be part of our church community is through groups. Groups exist to help you grow and develop deeper community here at the house. We are currently in the middle of connect group season. Have you joined a group yet? I wanna encourage you to join one today. Let's be real. Sometimes building community and new friendships in adulthood could be weird and awkward, but it is so worth it. Having a community of people centered around Christ that are there to encourage, support, and pray for you is life-changing. Join a group today by visiting our table in the lobby after service or register online under our groups page. The third way to be part of our church community is through events. Events are a one-time experience to help inspire and encourage our church community. Today, right after church, join us for our annual chili cook-off where we will be announcing a winner. Join in on the fun today. On October 27th, we will be having a costume Sunday party for our kids' ministry. We're gonna make this a fun Sunday for our kids to invite their friends and for you to invite friends and family. We'll have a bouncy house, lots of candy, and more fun for the families and kiddos. You can participate by inviting families with little ones to join us for fun, or by donating candy, you can drop it off in the library. The fourth way to be part of our church community is through classes. Classes exist to help you learn biblical principles to grow your faith. We are currently in the middle of a new practical life course titled Financial Wellness. If you're wanting to level up in your stewardship of finances, we want to encourage you. There's still time to sign up today on our coming soon page. Now I'd love to direct us to a moment of giving. Proverbs 28, 25 in the New Living Translation says this, greed causes fighting. Trusting in the Lord leads to prosperity. There's no other way to say it. Greed causes fights because it makes us only think about ourselves. Greed destroys businesses. Greed destroys families and communities because it's always thinking about me. How can I get more? It's the opposite of trust. Trust says, God, I trust you to hold this. Trust says, God, I trust your word more than I trust my emotions that say, hold on to everything. When we trust God, he adds to it because that thing does not have our heart, he does. If greed kills, trust builds. Greed kills community, but trust and generosity builds community. We give because we trust God most. We give and as we do so, it actually kills greed. As we give today, let's kill greed and trust God. Let's pray. Jesus, as we give today, we are doing just that. We are out of our generosity. We're asking that you would just get rid of any sort of greed that's happening within us. May you get all the glory and honor today as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we want to let you know about an exciting announcement. As of this month, we partnered with Overflow, an online donation platform to power our generosity. Overflow differs from our current giving platform, Pushpay, in that it offers new ways to give and has lower processing fees, making our giving go even further towards building God's kingdom. Through Overflow, we're thrilled to announce that you can now contribute stocks, IRAs, crypto, and even give from your DAF, all through Overflow in less than five minutes. Changes that you will see when giving for one-time givers, simply use our website, now linked to Overflow, as a primary giving option. If you're a reoccurring giver, you can now set up your reoccurring gift on this new platform via our website at thehousella.org forward slash give. Over the next couple of months, we'll be phasing out of our new platform, Pushpay. Again, we want to express our gratitude for your unwavering support of The House LA. You can give online or if you're here in service, our hosts are coming down each aisle with buckets. You can go ahead and pop your prayer requests and your giving in there. Again, we're so happy that you're with us today. Now let's go to the message. Thank you so much for joining us today at The House LA. My name is Wes, I'm the lead pastor here. And I just wanna say thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. 
Thank you for liking, subscribing, all of that. I hope that these messages really encourage you. The series that we're doing right now called Finding Faith in the City of Angels, this is about helping you to make it. Let's be real. Finding a good, solid local church in LA, sometimes it can feel a little bit more difficult than it should be. It's kind of like some of the young guys that I know that are dating. It's like, this is difficult. And I'm like, I was, I've been married for a long time, so I can't understand you there. But I do know this, finding a spouse from their perspective, it's difficult. Finding a church can be difficult. But if you are going to make it, you need a good, solid local church. So that's why we're talking about finding faith in the city of angels. And today we're talking about finding faith in the city of angels. The church is where the saints gather and community is intentional. Nothing will test your friendships or your relationship like putting together something from Ikea. I don't know what they do if one of the ingredients that they add is frustration. Maybe it's like the little tools that they give you that are about two inches by three inches and they're like, build a house with this Allen wrench and it fits everything and you're screwing stuff together and you're hammering and then you got to undo it because you put this part together before that part. Here's the worst thing is when you uh, complete the project with your friend and, or your spouse and you're on the verge of hating each other, you're like, I'm moving out. I'm taking this bookcase with me. I'm moving out. I'm taking this table with me or a husband and wife, like I'm sleeping in the other room or I'm frustrated or whatever is when you're done. And there's all these extra parts, there's these extra pieces and you're like, what, wait, what are these for? And you just try to like, oh, they gave us some extra pieces that they're, they're generous. That's why they would give us some extra. They're, uh, you know, they, they just, these are extra. And it's like, I actually, I think that this is intentional. I think that there was a meaning. I think that this is supposed to go somewhere and we need to find out why this is a part. Community is supposed to be intentional. It's not just something that just happens. It's by the maker given to you that is a part of the ingredients of building your spiritual life. Let's jump into Acts 2, 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers are meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there's a sound of heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in, in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Those who believed what Peter, I just skipped down to verse 41, those who believed what Peter said were baptized, added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Because he preaches the gospel, they respond, what do we do? And he goes, hey, you gotta repent, you gotta follow Jesus. Here's the life that this looks like. This is what happened. Verse 42, all the believers, now they've got this big crew, all of the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. They devoted themselves. Deep sense of awe came over all of them. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and they shared everything that they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to the fellowship those who are being saved. The story of the early church is a story of a committed group of believers who are committed to God and each other. They're filled with devotion, devotion to God and devotion to each other. I know that people are, have hearts for revival. I have a heart for revival. I want a move of God in this city and in this church. And we are experiencing that. We're in the middle of experiencing that. But moves of God must be followed by moves of people. God moves, but then you and I also have to move. Some Christians have this theology of uh, almost like a version where God does everything and we do nothing. Others, on the other extreme, they're like, we do everything. We don't even pray. We just, if it's God's will, it'll happen. But there is a level of personal responsibility that we see here in the book of Acts chapter number two. If you wanted an orange, you know, like the fruit, if you wanted an orange, there are three ways that you can get an orange. You can go to your nearest grocery store and you can buy yourself an orange. 
Uh, you can go pick an orange, the area where our church is located. There's actually lots of people around here uh, that have orange trees and citrus trees and things like that. You can just go knock on someone's door, hey, can I have some of your oranges? Or number three, you can plant an orange tree. But can you imagine if someone said, hey, I really wanted an orange. I even prayed about it. I prayed for an orange. Well, you know, it's like, well, what'd you do next? I just sat there and I just prayed, God, give me an orange. You know, anyone would look at them after a while and say, well, if you really wanted an orange, you can either go buy one, you can pick one, or you can plant one. There, there's actually something that you can do. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, it will not happen without community. And for some people, they are just praying, ah, I want community. And then someone says, well, what have you done? Have you, have you gone somewhere? Have you gone to a community? Have you gone to a group? Have you invited someone out? If you want community, you'll need to make some intentional steps because wanting it is not enough. Verse number 42. All the believers, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Here's what they were committed to and what we should also be committed to as well. Committed to personal spiritual growth. That's people who come to church early. They take notes. They're leaning in. They're going to classes. They're, they're, they're learning the Bible at our Wednesday night Bible classes. They're, they're digesting the material. They're going back over and rehearsing the material. They have their own personal Bible reading plan. No one else can hunger for you. It is a spiritual discipline. They're also committed to a group. Relationships, they're developed over time. Uh, it's amazing that when you, uh, an emergency or something like that happens, how all the things that you thought were important, you find out it really isn't that important. Suddenly they don't matter. Don't wait for an emergency to happen to realize how much you actually deeply need community. They were also committed to a meal together. When you ask yourself the question, when is the last time that you shared a meal or a coffee or you went out with a friend? Not work, not work related. Not trying to like, hey, I'm trying to get a new client or something like that, but just I'm going out with someone from our church and we're going to spiritually, we're just going to encourage each other. We're going to laugh together. For me, a sign of spiritual health is laughter. How much is the community laughing together? How much is there just, we're just enjoying, because when we're laughing together, that means that there's this trust, there's this connection. You know what makes me laugh. I know what makes you laugh. There's this connection there. How about this committed to pray? Praying for the community, praying for each other, receiving prayer, asking for prayer and offering prayer. A praying church is a powerful church. James Clear, in his famous book, Atomic Habits, is one of my probably top five or top 10 uh, favorite books. He says this, you don't rise to your goals, you fall to your systems. For some of you, one of the most spiritual things that you can do is put going to church in your calendar. I know that sounds crazy. I'm going to go to church on Sunday and I'm setting this, I'm setting this up to reoccurring every Sunday, 52 weeks here. I'm setting this up. Not, hey, let's give it like three or four weeks. Let's see what happens. You know, you wouldn't do that at the gym. I'm going to give myself like three weeks at the gym. And if I don't see nothing, I'm out. You know, one of the most spiritual things that you can do is putting going to church in your calendar. And for some of you, the most spiritual thing that you can do is putting going to a connect group in your calendar or serving in your calendar. I'm going to be committed. One thing I've noticed, can I just give you a pastoral thought? One thing that I've noticed is the people who get connected in community last. It's true, they last. Whether they're serving or they're in a connect group, the people who are connected in community last. Now, you may say, hey, coming to church feels impossible, it feels difficult. Uh, committed to community, like not just coming to church, but now I'm serving or I'm on a team or I'm in a group and, and that feels impossible. When my late pastor, Pastor Wendell, was diagnosed with cancer, he changed his diet, his health, his schedule, his habits overnight. Because at that point, once the doctor says, hey, you've got this and you have a very short amount of time to live, it was not a matter of convenience. What's convenient? What's not convenient? It's a matter of longevity. It's a matter of survival. You are in a spiritual battle. 
you have a real enemy, the devil, who wants to destroy you. He doesn't like you. He wants to tear you apart. According to one safari guide, I actually did some research on this and some African safaris. He says this, lions employ strategic hunting techniques that often involve separating prey from the herd. This behavior is particularly evident when they target large animals like a buffalo or a, wild, or a wildebeest. The lions work cooperatively to encircle the herd, create chaos, which helps them isolate a weaker or younger individual, making it easier to hunt. Does that sound a little bit maybe like what's happened to you or people that you know in a spiritual community? First Peter 5.8, Peter's talking to a church that is undergoing these tensions and, and, and fractures and stresses. And he says this, stay alert, watch out. The, your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy is the one who's trying to separate you from community. Because if he can separate you, he can destroy you. You will not make it without being committed to a spiritual community. And the early church knew this. They knew that there was strength in numbers, so much so that they met daily. That word, the Greek word ecclesia, the church, it's the called out ones. If you've been called out, you are also called in. You're called into a community of people who are living this gospel-filled life together. God did not just call you out. He also called you into Remember, the church, it's not man's invention. This is God's invention for you. It's the, the people that Jesus said that he is building. So who will we be? We will be a people who are committed to personal spiritual growth. We're committed to a group. We're committed to a meal. And we are committed to pray. And in that, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for my friends who are watching this right now. I'm praying, God, that you're going to help them to be a part of a vibrant community of believers who love Jesus, worship him, and are growing spiritually together. I'm praying if it's this church or another church, God, that you're going to help them to be plugged in to a community of believers that they can not only be dedicated to you, Jesus, but that they can be dedicated to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're watching this and you do not have a local church or you're kind of maybe spiritually homeless, can I encourage you to come, not just one week, come like four, five, six weeks in a row to the House LA. Put it in your calendar. And if you need help in finding who, uh, you know, like our service times and directions and all of that, you can check out thehousela.org. Now, I would be remiss uh, if, I, if I miss this, but I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have helped uh, just in all of your generosity. It's because of your generosity that we're able to do this broadcast. We're able to help other people and we're able to continue on the mission of God here in Los Angeles. And if that's you and you're also generous and you want to be a part of this, you can check out thehousela.org slash give. You can give there one time. You can set up your giving to be an automatic. You can also now give in stock and crypto as well. God bless. And I can't wait to see you back next week here at the house.